as a historian, surely you despair that, that, that all of these elites are so unaware of the lessons of history that they are actually repeating it. Pro well, provoking differences, treating people with sarcasm, the Marie Antoinette line, let them eat cake. Right. Have they learnt nothing from history? Um, there is a propensity to suppose that the world that we live in will just go on as it has in the past. And there's a blindness to history in the sense that, a blindness to the fact that all orders are fragile in character. You saw that, as I understand it, um, uh, somewhere uh, 15 years or so ago. You actually predicted that the political system was in for a big shock. Now, it took a little bit longer to happen. So to your credit, I think you were seeing that there was trouble brewing. Well, it, it went, you know, it was, it, when Obama became president, uh, I don't know if you, you know what his, um, uh, uh, the, the, he wanted to transform American politics. And um, he framed that not in terms of a new deal or the you know, great society or something along those lines, but in terms of a completely new order. Now, Obama was timid and he gave one speech at Georgetown and it didn't get picked up. And he sort of dropped the phrasing. Um, but that was what was intended. And uh, it has become the program of his party, which is we must transform the American political order, not make this change here or that change there for a redress of grievances or to cope with some problem that um, uh, had not come up before. That sort of thing has gone on forever. And that's the, the, the agility of democratic institutions is to cope with circumstances that change. No, it was the notion that the order itself was evil. Okay, when you overturn an order, what you get very often is a horror. Um, the man who understood this best was Edmund Burke. Yeah. And he understood. Well, he watched the French Revolution. Yes. Well, but before the. He's thinking it's Cromwell all over again. Yeah. That's what he's thinking. And, you know, in that book that he publishes in 1789, very early, he predicts Napoleon. He lays out where it's going to end. If you take an inherited order and simply overturn it and start from scratch, you will end up with disorder on a scale that will produce, that will, will only end if a Cromwell comes in and puts the cap on things, or if a Napoleon does. The genius of the British system and of the post-revolutionary American system has been the capacity to make adjustments. Yeah. Uh, and, and the conviction that the inherited order is pretty good. Now, this is, um, I want to put this in another frame, a slightly different frame, because I think there's, there's something else going on that's vitally important. Um, and that is, uh, there was one great flaw in the neoliberal world order in the rules-based system, which is that it could be exploited by powers that weren't committed to that system. Under the aegis of the neoliberal liberal global order, you could practice mercantilism. Uh, and at the same time that we've had this transformation of politics that involves entering the silly season in which you reject everything from the past without having any kind of intelligent plan for what to put in its place. Can I interrupt there just for a moment? You say President Obama said we had to transform things. In other words, he wanted to get rid of the order we had. Oh yes, there's no question. I, I accept that. And you're saying that this is now common amongst elites, that's the push. 
Yes. They don't have any idea of the end state. Did President Obama have an idea of what he... No. That's a pretty profound thing to say. Yes. You had a President of the United States who gets there under the established order, makes all sorts of oaths and commitments really to maintaining the Republic and yes. all the rest of it, wants to overturn it, doesn't actually believe in it at all, but doesn't have an alternative vision. That's right. It's, it, there's, there's a vision of what's evil, which is what is given. That's why I call it nihilism. In other words, there's nothing nihil uh, at the end of the thing. What makes this particularly dangerous, though, is the uh, neoliberal global order is finished. And that has to do with the rise of China. Yeah. Um, I don't mean that part of it can't be salvaged, but that would take a real effort. And there is a kind of blindness. I mean, if someone were to ask me, what do you think of the presidents from the first Bush to today? I would say that they bear comparison with Stanley Baldwin as prime minister of Great Britain. They averted their gaze from something developing that was a very great threat. And they left us, in effect, disarmed. If it's you would ask communism, me... It's isn't it? Hmm? Isn't it called communism? Well, except it's not exactly like the old communism. No, the not. old communism had one great virtue, and, and that was, that, that was um, uh, their farming system, which didn't work. <laughs> um, mm. Which meant the Soviet Union was collective farms were a disaster yeah. and they stuck with it and in china was, too the ukraine was once the bed basket of europe it then became pathetically unable to feed itself. that's right it, it's as clear as a bell yeah. and china too mm -hmm. and and the effect of it was that um they were weak yeah china is much stronger than yeah. the old soviet union ever that's was. the difference yes but and my, so but my point really was we'd gone to sleep if we'd known our history again, you would right. have known that communism always demands power. Right. It and always insists that loyalty is given to the party. It can brook no opposition, and it's therefore very dangerous. But we pretended it wasn't. Right. Isn't that really the... Well, there was a dream. If, yeah. if we make them rich, yeah. the middle class will grow up. Yeah. The middle class will assert itself. We also ignored the cultural heritage of Russia, which is autocracy. Yeah. They've really never known anything other than that, except for very brief periods. Mm. And the cultural heritage of China, which is autocracy. And the continued interest in China, existence in China of the old Communist Party that had grown wise in one particular. Mm. They realized that you needed commerce. Um, and so they'd grown much, much stronger. And so year after year from the first Bush on, we ignored it. And the United States concentrated its attention on um, Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, wasted enormous material wealth on it and far worse enormous moral capital on it. Uh, yes. And so there's going to be a tremendous challenge at a time when the elites in the United States don't believe in their own country. Yes, yeah. And I don't know what the consequences of that will be. One possibility is the silly season will end. They'll wake up and they'll think, oh, we've got to defend this country. Because in the end, they do know that their own well-being was produced by the system that they think in their sort of childish um, self-indulgence that they want to destroy.